Um, welcome to Home Keepers. I hope you're having a good day today. Grab a cup of tea, join me. And I always like to uh, give a special welcome to brand new viewers. And we have brand new ones every day and we are so thankful for that. Hope you'll become a long time friend with us. Uh, we try to deal with uh, any and every issue facing the home. And of course, children are such a intricate part of, of homes across America and beyond. And the, what you call crisis pregnancies. And sadly, uh, some girls turn to abortion for that. We're going to uh, talk about that and, and show you a better way. And for, for this is a family situation. It's not just the girl. It's a family situation. And uh, I have a perfect guest for that. His name is Saul Pichon. And he is the head of New Life Solutions in uh, the Tampa Bay area of Florida. And his story, I mean, it will stop you in your tracks. And I have a portion of that on video. I don't want to give it away, but make sure you stay with us. Uh, that you see just a three minute video clip of his life story. And if you ever doubted God's hand on a person and giving them a destiny, I think you won't after you see that. So I'm anxious to talk to him, a good friend. He's been here before. And I'm going to join Wanda in the kitchen in a minute for a really, really different kind of dip. Very simple. And it's one of our more simple recipes. Before I do though, I would like to just remind you again, we have offered this book before, but it is so important. I would like to get all the books out there that I can on this subject. It's called Surrender the Secret. It's by Pat Layton. And it is her story, an amazing story of how God used a horrible situation in her life, which included abortion, and uh, has placed her where she is today. Every, every mother ought to have this book. Uh, if you're considering abortion at all, you need this book. If you know some girl who's in trouble, get this book for her because there is hope. That's one thing I want you to know, this program at the end of the road, there's a lot of hope here and don't do something that you might regret. You feel desperate about these things, don't you, Wanda? You, yes, you, you, when uh, you're in situations, you feel when, when you're in that kind of a situation and, and you think this is the only way and culture's telling you that, right? it's not true. There's a lot of happy endings on this. Well, I thought, mm -hmm. Wanda did all the prep today because I've been doing other things. I thought you were going to get the cream cheese and going to mix all this stuff in it. And you say, no. No, we're not. And we're just going to take a block of cream cheese. And, you know, we have, we have really done the last month or so, we've done some great appetizers. Mm -hmm. I think those, to, uh, those tomato bites with the puff pastry uh -huh. was delightful. This is another one you could use along if you want with the appetizers. Sharon Bailey had a fit over those. The puff oh, she pastry did? Yes. Oh, well, they're really good and they're easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not hard to do. And I remember going over this recipe because Wanda and I go over them together. And the thing that stuck out to me was the ingredients, but I didn't pay attention how you put it together. So, yeah, it's um. Wanda's going to do show and tell for us. Oh yeah, it's not hard. I I have to tell you, I was really pleasantly surprised about how wonderful this is together. I I would never have thought about it myself. I don't know no why. Way. Now I think about it and I think, why didn't I think of that? But this is actually about a quarter cup of um, orange marmalade. You can use apricot, but I really in particular like the orange marmalade. This is a quarter cup of salsa. Yeah, and those, when well, I saw those two together, oh, that's got to taste good. And you this get is, a good salsa and put something oh, sweet in it. Oh, man. And you know, it sort of reminds you of when you go to restaurants and they serve shrimp, the, the mm -hmm. coconut crusted shrimp. It sort of reminds you of a little bit of that sauce yeah. that they dip it in, sort of. I say sort of. We're going to mix this in really quite well. And, then, and this is the hard part. <laughs> it's so hard. You need a bowl and a spatula. And we're just going to really just pour this over the top of it. And it is, I'm telling you. Oh. And then we well, are I'm going to get a little fork here. I know we do it with crackers, but I... Just I would dying use, to taste I would it. use sliced, um, but we got these chopped, and believe me, I think it, they mislabeled them because They're they are ground. minced. They almost look I like a little bit of caviar, but trust me, it's not. Yeah, but I think that's better, though. Yeah. I'm going to sprinkle some cheese over top of it. 
And by the way, this is called. That's all you um, do. Yeah, really. Now, our, you're supposed to add a little bit of avocado, but I chose not to because <laughs> ours looked really sick. Like, it was really sick. Yeah, so it should have been peeled and used a couple days ago, maybe. Well, we sort of got it, <laughs> I think, a week ago and was hoping it wasn't right then. Now it's just, it's not pleasant. Okay, you do things better than I do, so you can do this, too. Oh, I can do that, too? Yes. Okay, so really Any all kind you of cracker do, you want, you put around it. Yeah. You know, you can just put your... Well, whoops, those... Yeah, sit that the other way. Yeah, go ahead and try it. Miss Arthling, these crackers are more like crumbs. And if you want to just mix the whole thing, that's not a bad idea. Oh. That is one great dip, Isn't girl. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I, I, oh! I have to tell you, I was here last night going, oh, glory to Jesus, this is so good. <laughs> this is so good. I said, Miss Arthling's going to love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, our crackers are just like. And it, I think not if doing you wanted well. it a little creamier, maybe you need a well, stiffer cracker, too. Mix it up. Well, also, it came right from the, I've right got from to the say, refrigerator, so it, it is cold. It does It does taste good to just kind of slosh the yeah, cheese I, through it. I even have more sauce. I mean, you can make up extra sauce. It's mm. not hard. So I just say play with it and add whatever things you want to make it, to make it look more appetizing to your taste. But this is called actually called um, um, cream cheese. Fiesta cream cheese spread, I think, is what oh, it's called. Oh, this is a winner. Let me tell you, this is a winner, and when you take the pop through your crackers like this with me. But let me tell you what, keep these ingredients in your fridge. Yes. You can get this out in an emergency. Yeah. So if you want this recipe, the information is coming up on your screen. Take note of that, and then uh, be sure, just stop what you're doing and take a look at uh, Saul's life. It's really going to touch your heart. Mm -hmm. that. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. 1942, Germaine was only 16, only 16 years old when her entire family, her mother and five sisters and herself, were forced to leave their home along with thousands of other confused and terrified families. Germaine had already witnessed the cruelty of the Nazis when she watched her father being killed in front of her by a German soldier. As the family was herded like cattle into a crowded boxcar, their destination was unknown. And although they were told that they were headed for Poland to be given homes and to work on a farm where they could earn some much needed money, the horrible reality was that they would soon join so many others whose lives would be tragically and horribly ended for one reason. They were Jewish and they were an unwanted people. Germaine was so scared, she had no idea what was happening or where they were taking her family. They traveled for eight days with no food or water. Germaine's mother tried to comfort the family, but they had heard stories of what this day would mean. The only comfort was that they were together. But that would soon change. As the train arrived at the now infamous Nazi concentration camp known as Auschwitz, Germaine's family was immediately shattered. Her mother and sisters were led away presumably to the gas chambers. They killed 3,000 in the gas chambers that day. She would never see them again. Germaine was put in a group of 300 teenage girls and held in block 10. The living conditions were unimaginable. This block was known as the experimental block, where the young girls were saved for medical experiments. Germaine was in shock. She had just lost her entire family, and now she was all alone. A 16-year-old girl not knowing her fate but was fearing the worst. Germaine's fears were soon realized as she was led into a small dark operating room where she would soon be confronted by the infamous angel of death, Dr. Joseph Mengele. Without anesthesia, Mengele began an operation to remove Germaine's reproductive organs. He had already removed one of Germaine's ovaries when airplanes from the Allied forces began a bombing raid. Mengele ran away to hide but instructed an imprisoned Jewish doctor who was assisting with surgery to finish the job. It was as if an angel of life had come to Germaine. Instead of completing the surgery, the Jewish doctor decided to leave her remaining ovary intact. But he made her promise two things. One, that she would hide her cycle so that no one would know what he had done. And two, that she would name her first son after him. Germaine kept both promises. Three more years would pass before Germaine was freed from her captors. 
she met and married Simon, another Holocaust survivor. Not knowing if she would ever be able to have children of her own, the Lord blessed she and Simon by increasing her family to include four sons who married and gave her eight grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Simon and Germain named their firstborn son Solomon, Solomon Saul Pichon. The family will rejoice and increase even more with the arrival of two more great-grandchildren as Saul's daughter welcomes twin girls in November. Because of Germain's horrible ordeal, Saul's very birth is a miracle in itself. But because of Saul's commitment and the commitment of so many other caring people, miracles are happening every day. Because we are called for such a time as this, today's Holocaust of abortion is being replaced by miracles of life. One day at a time, one life at a time. Thank you for helping us to fight the Holocaust of abortion in our community. Leaves me speechless, mm. Saul. It's a powerful story. Leaves me speechless. Welcome. Glad to Thank have you, you. back. Thank <clears throat> you, my and uh, to see how the work has grown, uh, because I think I was in the very first meeting. This, this, this uh, center is really from the Christian Action Council beginnings. And, right. But um, just to just to think that your mom supposedly was fixed so she couldn't have any children. She has a child who God says is going to save a lot of babies. Mm -hmm. I know I've, I've shared with people for years that uh, I tell them my mother survived the Holocaust of World War II and the Lord has me serving Him in the Holocaust of, a, of abortion here in America today. And that, you know, God, God has a plan and a purpose and a calling and a destiny for every child, mm -hmm. no matter how, when, or where they were conceived, and that only that child can fulfill. So God's on a throne. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is just a little a bunny trail, and then we'll get back to mm -hmm. our subject. But how do you feel when this president of Iran, who I believe is demon possessed, yeah. says there was no Holocaust? We got all these pictures out yeah. here. It grieves me. I, I do get angry, and uh, and again, I know God's on a throne, mm -hmm. and He's going to take care of that leader. Mm -hmm. and, and remove him. That is our prayer, that he would be removed. Mm -hmm. And that the lie that comes from the pit of hell would be over, overturned with God's word. But it does, and we're human. Yeah, we're human it, but here. we get glimpses into the people in Iran and, and uh, what they want, and they want, yeah. they want freedom. I believe they, they do. They're, they're a, a well-educated, smart people. Yes, so. they are. They're suppressed and they're mm -hmm. being lied to. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's even more important for all of us to be to be sh uh, sharing the mm -hmm. gospel. Your 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 program. You have no idea the people that you're impacting that are I from other so. nations that go so. back and share the love mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, when I look at your life, I see how God prepared you not just from your birth and your mom's yeah. story, but uh, you became a Christian psychotherapist, which yeah. I think would greatly aid and enhance what you're doing, that you, you would know how to talk to somebody in a crisis. Yeah. That's pretty important. Yeah, I've, I've had the privilege of working in a psychiatric hospital for three years and in private practice a number of years. What I, what I share with people is that uh, being raised in a Jewish family prepared me for anything mm -hmm. and everything, and especially when both parents, both my mother and father, were Holocaust survivors. And, and it's really interesting because in, in our family, with, with our dad, uh, we could do no right. With our mom, we could do no wrong. <laughs> Pretty good so balance. So it prepared, it prepared me to counsel anybody. Uh, I, I relate to everybody. So it... Oh, I bet you got uh, the stories. Oh, uh, tremendous stories. Fun, fun, funny stories within our own family. Um, but I didn't come to know the Lord until I was 36. And, um, and being raised in a, in a Jewish home, it, it, it provided a good foundation. It was what, a loving they, home. Were they Orthodox? Conservative. We're con conservative Jews. I was bar mitzvahed at a, a local synagogue here, and, um, and and so didn't go to the synagogue, but uh, just a few times a year. So we, we weren't devout, uh, but we were, quote, Jews. And like most Jewish people, are cultural Did Jews. Did your whole family come to Jesus? No, no. My mother, my mother is, um, she's getting closer. Mm -hmm. I, I bring her with me to the various churches where, where I speak and mm -hmm. have her share about her testimony. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you in the, in the audience to, uh, to truly keep praying for her. Her name is Jarmaine. Mm -hmm. But we know she's going to come into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. 
And my father had, before he passed away, there were a couple pastor friends that went over to the nursing home to two different times, and, and he prayed. He prayed to receive Christ. Mm -hmm. So we're standing on that. Absolutely. Don't you think heaven's going to be a surprise for a lot of people in many areas? <laughs> we will. We will all be very surprised. Yeah. Oh, uh, did you make it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the focus really here is it, we both have the same hearts, and that is for, 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 for babies, for, for children, for families. And my heart is to share the love of Christ. All those years I didn't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. All those years I never went to church. I feel like I've got to make up mm -hmm. for those first 36 years of, of not worshiping our Savior and our Lord. And so my heart is evangelism. And that's the heart of, of our ministry and really the crisis pregnancy mm -hmm. ministries called really life affirming ministries. That's really what we need to call them all over the nation. Yeah, now this one is called New Life Solutions. Solutions. And uh, it's much bigger and broader than uh, what we think of as the Crisis Pregnancy Center. You actually have a place now to deliver babies I and I mean just from conception until the baby's born and beyond. Um, yeah. So I would like for people to understand this. Maybe we can go ahead and put your website up so mm -hmm. that uh, we can just leave it up and uh, because it covers so many areas and one of them is that um, women can go there and get exams. I mean, whether they're pregnant or not, whether they're young or old, whatever, they can go in there and um, have some good female examinations. Exactly. What, we, what you're referring to is, is our Breath of Life Women's Health Services and Birth Center. Mm -hmm. We are the only pregnancy center in the nation to provide birthing services. I've been and in there. Yes, it's, and it's a beautiful facility yeah. and with three birthing rooms. And and so That's a jacuzzi, I think. Oh, it is. All three rooms have birthing tubs and half the women are having their their babies there. And and it's really open to the whole community. So not only are crisis pregnancy clients mm -hmm. um, are having having their babies there, but couples, uh, mm -hmm. many couples from the church who believe in a natural child birth Yeah, and you experience. have midwives. And we have midwives, and, and so we do, it's, an o, it's a Christ-centered OBGYN practice, so we do OB as well as GYN and, um, you know, exams, um, mm -hmm. you know, women's exams for uh, women. Uh, we, we minister to women of all ages there. And so we take Medicaid and, and um, insurance and self-pay in that part of the ministry. And um, for most of these women that do have that crisis pregnancy, uh, they're able to get good prenatal care. Because one of the major issues, Arthelene, is that a lot of women aren't getting good prenatal care. Mm -hmm. So they have issues with their problems with their, with their pregnancy and, um, and low birth weight babies, not only here mm -hmm. in our community, but all over the nation. So we're looking at good prenatal care, a continuum of care from the time they come into one of our three pregnancy centers, a continuum of care, discipleship, and then a revenue stream that hopefully one day mm -hmm. will, it will pay for itself and then it goes in to do more ministry. Because our ministry is, is expanded. We call it New Life Solutions because there's four ministry outreaches. Mm -hmm. We do prevention with our youth program, we go out in the schools. Teach abstinence. Teach abstinence, we're teaching character and boundaries to help prevent teen pregnancies and STDs. And then we do intervention is our three centers where we provide the pregnancy tests and sonograms at all three centers. Mm -hmm. We've worked, focus on a family, has, has uh, worked with us and, and, and helped provide those uh, sonogram machines. And of course, we share the gospel. Now, the the, the sonogram has changed everything. Are you aware? Yeah. I'm going to have these people on next month. There's a uh, van kind of thing uh, that goes around with an ultrasound machine in it, and girls right off the street could could go yeah. in. And uh, I, I think that was a major turning point mm -hmm. in this whole thing is when those girls could see that it's not just a clump of cells. Exactly. It's moving around. It, it's exactly right. We have found, and, and pretty much nationally, that when that when that woman, and our average age is 21, a lot of people think it's just teenagers. It's all teenagers, yeah. Oh, it's not. It's, it's from, we'll see, we'll see um, women in their teens from uh, 12 years old to 50 year old women that come through, but the average is about 21 years old. And when they see are they their child, most, most of them are, are not, not married. married. I'd say 90%, 95% are not married. But we have our, you know, the, the married couples too that go through their crisis. And we encourage them to, to choose life for their child. Yeah. And we really, and we really promote adoption too. Because um, that is a, a, a wonderful alternative. So if the average age is 21, mm -hmm. 
What, what's the first thing you do when the when that young lady walks in there and uh, maybe she knows she's pregnant? Does she think maybe that this is a place to get an abortion? Some do, because uh -huh. one of our locations is right next door to an abortion clinic, mm -hmm. and when they see our sign out front, uh, for free ab free pregnancy test, some of them do come in, mm -hmm. and we're not being deceptive. They, they come in and they, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll ask, oh, do you do abortions here? And we say, we do not, but uh, do you know how far along you are? So, and so they'll come and we'll talk with them, counsel with them, and uh, share with them all three options, and then provide the free ultrasound. Do you direct them if they're interested in adoption? Is there a, a good place where you can direct them? We do. There, there's a number of different adoption agencies that we work with and adoption attorneys and, and uh, direct them. Last year we had, I, I believe, seven, seven babies placed for adoption and a number of others that were looking at it. But you know, the unfortunate thing, Arthleen, is a lot of these women, they'll, they'll either raise the child, choose to parent, or uh, abort. Yeah. Because they feel they abortion <laughs> is abandoning their child, which is just so far off. So Adoption, you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that uh, adoption is abandoning yeah, their child. Yeah, go figure. And so, so we'll just kill it. <laughs> oh, so our a lot of what we do is education. We're educating them and saying, here's your three options: abortion, which we we don't choose, we don't feel that that's the right decision, and mm -hmm. these are the reasons why, mm -hmm. and then parenting or placing for adoption. And so that's a big part of what we're doing. We're 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 educating them, we love on them, because the first thing we do when they come in is receive them with such love. They go to the health departments at their various places throughout the nation. It's crowded, it's, it's, um, not, in, it's not in the best condition. They come into our centers or any of the centers throughout the nation. They're, you know, they're clean and they're loving and they're very inviting. Yeah, and uh, you know what I've noticed, especially I've been in several of them, there is a spirit there. There is. <laughs> I kid you not, you walk in there, and I finally figured it out, duh, life. It's life. They're saving life. And the other thing that's always impressed me, uh, the uh, volunteers there, mm -hmm. and the same volunteers will be there year after mm -hmm. year after year. Mm -hmm. And some of them um, have uh, had abortions in the past, and this is their way of exactly. giving back. God, God so. will use what Satan means for evil, turn around for good. And some of our best counselors, we call them life coaches. Mm -hmm. Some of the best life coaches are those who have had abortions mm -hmm. in their past, and they can really speak to that woman that's from the way, their own experience. That's the way he turns it around. And yeah. uh, to you good people out there, and you, you might be who knows uh, where, we go all over the nation, and you, you're in a situation, you do not know what to do, please contact me. And between Saul and Pat Layton mm -hmm. and the people around here, <clears throat> we can probably point you to a good place no matter what city you're in. And uh, just, just hold back and uh, you'll see that God will be with you all the way through it. Stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. And I've Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I would again like to offer you the book Surrender the Secret by Pat Layton. This is her story and uh, the way God has used her <clears throat> Since the problems in her life brought her through to great victory, she's helping a lot of other women. It's a story worth reading. We'll send it to you for that gift of at least $15. Uh, you can call our 800 number if you use a credit card or write to us. This is a wonderful book for any woman who's had a, an abortion or one who is considering it. Let me encourage you to order that. You know, when the women's movement was born in America, its purpose was to represent all women and the issues where inequality between the sexes existed. There's no doubt it was, a, it was really good to shine the spotlight on these inequities. However, it seemingly has become a one-issue movement, and that is the promotion of abortion. I've yet to see them stand up for a pro-life woman. But because of my position in television, I've had a front-row seat to watch the pro-life and the pro-death camps battle it out. I well remember the day when my own thoughts on the subject became focused and well-defined. It was a bright, sunny Florida day. I observed a very pretty young nurse 
dressed in her uniform, walking all alone back and forth in front of an abortion clinic carrying a sign that read, Abortion Kills Children. This was the way she chose to spend her time on the days that she did not work. But that simple statement pierced my heart. Since that time, I was involved in several Operation Rescue efforts. I attended the first Christian Action Council meeting in our county. You know, this wonderful organization, born in the home of Billy Graham, promoted education and hands-on ministry, providing services for young women caught in what they considered a catastrophic situation. This ministry offers help for the mother, the baby, and whenever possible, the father. Parents, this is a sidebar. Teach your sons to step up to the plate. They'll be better men for it, but I digress. Ladies, if you find yourself today in what seems to be an impossible situation, listen to me carefully. Step back, take a deep breath, and call or visit a crisis pregnancy center. I urge you not to do something that can haunt you and that you will regret for the rest of your life. Hey, you want some good news? Just a few days ago, I read my hometown paper that according to a recent poll, the pro-life people now outnumber the pro-abortion forces in America. So don't give up. We're winning. We're winning them one heart at a time. But in closing, I would like to address those who tirelessly promote abortion, who prefer to call themselves pro-choice. You know, I just might join you. In fact, I will seriously consider joining you on the day you give the baby a choice. Think about it. And please join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.